Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at the strength of a magnetic field, magnetic field lines and field strength, magnetic flux density, and we'll finish with the summary. We're now going to discuss the strength of magnetic field. Imagine that we place two bar magnets at opposite ends of a desk, separated by a relatively large distance. We find that they do not move with respect to each other. They do not seem to repel or attract when the poles are aligned. So we would expect these magnets to attract each other and therefore to move towards one another, but in fact they remain stationary. This is because the magnetic fields of each magnet at this distance are too weak to produce a significant force on the other. So close by this magnet we have a strong force which means that the magnets would attract each other if they were close together. However, at this distance, the field is a lot weaker and therefore the force on this magnet is too small to be attracted to the other magnet. As we bring one of the magnets close to the other, the magnet experiences an increasing force due to the field of the other magnet. So now that these two magnets are closer together, they experience a larger force towards each other and therefore they attract. Magnetic field strength increases as we move close to the source of the field. Here we've drawn the magnetic field lines of a bar magnet and it turns out that as we get closer to the magnet itself which is the source of the field lines there is an increase in magnetic field strength. This corresponds to a magnetic pole experiencing a greater force at closer distances to the source. So here we have a big bar magnet in the centre and for this magnet here, which is separated by quite a large distance from the source, we see that the force on this magnet, which we're going to call F1, is fairly small. And notice that the force on the south pole is in the opposite direction to the force on the north pole, because the south pole is repelled by this south pole and the north pole is attracted to it. Now let's consider this magnet which is much closer to the source. This is going to experience a much greater force, which we're going to call F2. And again, notice that the south pole is repelled by the south pole of the source, whereas the north pole is attracted towards the south pole of the source. And we know that F2 is greater than F1. We're now going to talk about how magnetic field lines can indicate magnetic field strength. We can gauge the strength of magnetic field by looking at how closely the magnetic field lines are spaced. So in the two examples below, we have a current carrying wire and current is in the upwards direction for both wires. Remember that we can use the right hand grip rule to show the direction of the field lines. If we point our thumb in the direction of the current and curl our fingers round, this will show us the direction of the field lines. And you can see that the magnetic field lines are curving in an anti-clockwise direction. And in these two examples, one of the magnetic field lines are very dense, whereas these magnetic field lines are much more sparse. Closely spaced lines indicate a stronger magnetic field. And we can see that closer to the wire, we have very dense magnetic field lines. And further away, we have much more sparse magnetic field lines. And this means as we move outwards from the wire, we have a decreasing magnetic field strength. If the lines are equally spaced, this signifies that the magnetic field is uniform. So these magnetic field lines are all equally spaced from one another, and this means that this magnetic field is uniform. With this knowledge, we can see that the magnetic field strength of a bar magnet is strongest at the poles. At the poles are where the field lines are most dense, and so the field is strongest. Further away from the poles, we see that the field lines are much more sparse. This can be demonstrated by placing a paper clip near to a bar magnet. A paper clip is made from steel, and although it is not a magnet, it still experiences a magnetic force, because magnets can attract not only other magnets, but some kinds of metal, like certain types of steel. This paper clip is going to move directly to one of the poles on the magnet and we see that it's moved from its initial position up 
onto the pole of the magnet. And this is because the field is strongest at the poles, and therefore these regions result in the greatest attractive force on the paperclip. So here's our paperclip. It's experiencing a force towards the middle, F1, a slightly greater force, F2, but the greatest force of all, F3, is towards the pole. The measure of the strength of a magnetic field is known as the magnetic flux density, and we give the symbol B to this, which is why we sometimes refer to a magnetic field as a B field. Looking at our example of a bar magnet again, we look at the magnetic flux density in three different regions. Since we know that the strength of a magnetic field is greatest at the poles, we know that B1 is greater than B2, which must be greater than B3. The commonly used unit for magnetic flux density is the Tesla, or T. And if we measured the magnetic flux density at the pole of a bar magnet, we'd find that it was about 0.01 Tesla. And this is because the magnetic flux density of a bar magnet is very small. We define the magnetic flux density as the density of the field lines in a given region. For example, in these two cases here, we have B1 and B2. And the more lines that there are through a certain region, the greater the magnetic flux density. And because B2 has more lines through this area in the black square, this means that the magnetic flux density B2 is greater than the magnetic flux density B1. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap reply smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.